When you go to the Upper Baraka Gardens in Malta's capital city, Valletta, you will experience one of the most breathtaking views you will ever see, the Grand Harbour, and on the other side, Cotonera, one of the oldest urban areas in Malta. The Phoenician traders first came to Malta around the 7th century, and since then, the Grand Harbour has always been a very valuable natural asset to the natives. It is no wonder, therefore, that every military or political superpower through the ages has coveted the unique haven provided by this harbour, and, historically, the people of the three cities, rebaptized Cotonera by Napoleon, have always been astute enough to maximize their strategic resources. Comprising mainly of the three cities, Vittoriosa, Senglia and Cospicua, Cotonera used to be the most densely populated area in the Maltese Islands, but the Second World War and the unrelenting air raids by the Axis air squadrons led to mass relocation overnight and what were once the busiest streets around the docks were now slowly fizzling out. The oldest city of the three, Vittoriosa, was named after the victory of the Knights of St. John, together with the Maltese, over the Turks in the Great Siege of 1565. Upon their arrival in Malta in 1530, the Knights, led by Grand Master Lee Ladam, had chosen this only existing city near the Grand Harbour as their residence, because the old capital city in Dina was too far inland in case of attacks by the Turks. So the Knights strengthened its defences, by reinforcing and restructuring Fort St. Angelo, a remarkable fortress. The Knights also built other defences on the other peninsula, Isla, later renamed Senglia, with the erection of Fort St. Michael, which proved to be very important in the victory of the Great Siege of 1565. This fort was literally dismantled by the British in the early years of the 20th century, to make way for two shipping docks for the Royal Navy. After the Great Siege, the Order continued its struggle to strengthen its key military positions by adding bastion lines all around, and although they had already completed the building of the new city, Valletta, they were mindful of the fate of the three cities, which had hosted them when they first came to the islands. But it had to be Grand Master Nicholas Cotoner, who, in 1670, embarked on a massive defensive scheme, that of the building of the Cotonera Lines, a vast, semicircular area comprising 40,000 residents with eight bastions, work which left Cotoner almost bankrupt, to the point that work was abruptly terminated upon his death in 1680. With the arrival of the British, Malta became a British colony and home to the Royal Navy's Mediterranean fleet. And to show the world how important Malta was to the British Empire, the British rulers renamed Fort St. Angelo and called it HMS St. Angelo. In fact, the late 19th and early 20th century were the most prosperous years in the history of Cotonera. But then came the Second World War, and the whole Cotonera area suffered uninterrupted attacks by the German and Italian airstrikes, which reduced the three cities to a heap of rubble. It was sheer perseverance and commitment on the parts of both the British and Maltese authorities that guaranteed that the Cotonera area was given the rehabilitation it was in dire need of, in the wake of such extensive bombing. So, when you go to the three cities and the surrounding suburbs, spare a thought for the stories of death and misery they have encountered. Their courage and determination is a beacon for us all.